Lettering is a powerful tool to have in your arsenal as a designer, illustrator, or artist. Just like our voices can convey different emotions, attitudes, and levels of intensity, learning the art of lettering can help you to bring words to life on the page or on the screen. Hi, I'm Linus Bowman with Envato Tuts Plus, and today I'll walk you through my complete Procreate to Illustrator lettering process, from thumbnail sketching to the final vector art file that we can print as a mixed typography and lettering poster or share on social media. I'm also the lettering artist behind the Calligrapher gift range, a YouTuber and designer. For this tutorial, I'm going to assume some familiarity with these tools, but if you are totally new to these tools, there are other great videos and courses on the Tuts Plus channel to help get you up to speed. This is the workflow I developed over many years and which uses Illustrator on Mac or PC and Procreate on the iPad Pro with Apple Pencil. But if you don't happen to have an iPad with Apple Pencil, don't worry. You can still follow along with the same process with traditional paper and pencil. So keep watching and we'll talk more about that later. With the iPad, I do recommend the paper-like screen protector. As you can see, my iPad is a bit of an older model and it still works perfectly well for this. I've had this screen protector for years now and I think it really makes drawing on the screen feel much more satisfying and easy to control than without it. We'll also be using assets from Envato Elements along the way, which is an unlimited creative subscription with millions of design assets, templates, fonts, and brushes. You get unlimited downloads of creative assets all ready to use with simple commercial licensing. Plus, no lock-in contract means that you can cancel any time. To start, it'll be helpful to define some terms and clarify some important concepts before we dive in further. First, what is lettering and how is it different from calligraphy? Calligraphy has been called the art of beautiful writing. It's usually written with either nibbed or pressure sensitive writing instruments in a set of established styles like black letter, round hand, copper plate, and modern brush calligraphy, which are a few popular varieties. Each style has its own set of guidelines and conventions and is created using a specific process. On the other hand, lettering is a much broader umbrella term that refers to any drawn decorative or expressive letters. You don't have to follow any rules or produce them in any particular way. You can draw inspiration from typography, sign writing, handwriting, or whatever takes your fancy. Lettering is often created by drawing the outlines of shapes rather than using pressure to control the thickness of the stroke. That is the thickness of the lines that make up the letters. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create a composition that combines calligraphic style custom lettering with more type influenced letters. Secondly, when it comes to digital artwork, there are two types of images, raster and vector. Raster graphics are made up of individual pixels, which you can see when you zoom in. Procreate makes raster artwork. Vector graphics, on the other hand, contain mathematical instructions on how a computer should draw out the shapes of an image. These graphics can be scaled to any size without losing quality, making them ideal for logos, illustrations, and typography. Adobe Illustrator is a vector graphics program. Raster graphics from Procreate are great for sharing lettering art on social media. However, for applications like clothing, posters, and merchandise, Vector has many advantages. Not only will it look sharp even when blown up to large sizes, but we can also adjust the stroke thickness and spacing if we want to print it small on something like stickers to improve the readability. Thirdly, we should discuss the anatomy of letters briefly. There's a lot of jargon I could use here, but we'll stick to the essentials. The baseline, X height, and cap height are the three most important horizontal guides for any set of letters. The baseline is the invisible line on which the bottoms of all letters rest. The X height is the height reached by the top of a lowercase x and most other lowercase letters. The cap height is where the tops of capital letters extend. Lowercase letters like H, K, and L with ascenders, stems that rise above the x height, tend to extend slightly above the cap height. Whereas letters like J, G, and Y with descenders dip below the baseline. I mentioned stroke previously, and that can be either fixed width 
or variable width. A fixed width or monoline stroke is one that never changes thickness, like drawing with a ballpoint pen. Variable width, on the other hand, does exactly that. It varies. The difference between the thinnest and thickest part is referred to as stroke contrast. If there is only a slight difference, the stroke contrast is low. If there is a significant difference, the stroke contrast is high. Knowing these terms will really be helpful later on. Before we can begin lettering, we need to select the words we'll be using. In this case, a phrase of two to six words is ideal. Keeping it short makes it easier to create a balanced composition. And the more words that we add, the more likely it is that letters will bump into each other, creating odd spaces or overlap unintentionally. If possible, try to avoid a word with many descenders sitting directly over a word with many ascenders. But more than practical considerations, it's important to find a phrase that makes you feel something, whether it's an affirmation or something more tongue in cheek. If you don't care about the words you're working on, it will be easy to lose motivation. For example, one of my favorite pieces of street art in London is by the muralist Stephen Powers in Hoxton and reads, let's adore and endure one another. I'm also quite fond of the old fashioned phrase, take courage. However, feel free to make your own riff on something you really like. So for this video, I'll use the phrase absolutely zero chill in honor of my delightful but rambunctious baby and the current mood in our household. If you're relatively new to lettering, it can be helpful to have a reference to work from as we move ahead. So take a look around on social media with a keen eye on lettering styles. A tip for finding references is to check the hashtags, which will often tell you what the style that you're looking at is called. Then you can Google that name plus the word alphabet and find some references for all the letters that you'll need in the image results. Or search for that term plus font as an alternative method. For this composition, I'll be using a derivative of copper plate calligraphy. When I first started, I used to refer back to reference alphabets quite often, but over the years I've developed quirks in the way that I draw certain letters based on my own personal preferences, and over time, so will you, but there's no shame in imitating while you're learning. The tool we'll be using to sketch is Procreate on the iPad. Now, as I said, there's nothing wrong with using a good old fashioned pen and paper, but that adds a few additional steps of scanning the paper sketch and cleaning up the lines in Photoshop to make sure it's clear enough to use as a reference in Illustrator. Working digitally has a number of other advantages. We can work non-destructively using layers and masks, and we can easily undo and repeat as much as we like, which gives us leeway to make mistakes without having to redraw whole sections. We can also easily save and share to different programs. But if you don't happen to have the equipment, not to worry, it can still definitely be done low tech. The first step is to set up our canvas in Procreate. I personally like to work with a square canvas at a pretty high resolution, around 4000 by 4000 pixels. Once we've created our blank canvas, we're going to import the DevBrush 5.0 bundle. There's a tutorial on how to import brushes into Procreate here on the Tuts Plus channel, which you can watch for more details on the steps to do this, which will be in the links down below, along with links to this brush set. Something else I like to do with my brushes is to tweak the stabilization settings, which in essence is how the iPad assists you in smoothing out your lines. These are the settings that I use, but it will change depending on what brush I'm using and at what scale. So please feel free to play with it and find what works for you. With everything set up, we can begin with concept sketching. The design industry term for this, at least in the UK, is scamping, which is a mix of sketching and comp, short for composition. What we're looking for here is small thumbnail sketches to test different layouts. Don't get too hung up on picking the right brush or settings. It's not important at this stage. The key here is not to focus on the details, but to think about whether or not it works as a concept and to play around with different ideas quickly. With our phrase absolutely zero chill, we can think about whether we want this on two lines or three lines, since absolutely is quite a bit longer than the other words. We can think about the alignment, center, left or right, etc. Don't focus too much on getting the letters neat or even that attractive. Right now we wanna think about what the rough shape of our final piece is going to look like. 
Also think about if you want to put emphasis on certain words. You might want to do them in a different style or size than the other letters. For me, I want zero to stand out. This will break up the phrase and how it's read. So you might read the words absolutely chill first and then zero, which flips the meaning. I'm going to make zero stand out in a different style as big, bold typographic lettering to contrast with the flowing, more delicate calligraphic letters. After playing with it, I've decided to go with a triangular composition for this piece. Of course, it depends on what words you're using in your phrase. Perhaps a circular, rectangular or diamond composition will suit your piece better. Having a strong overall shape will help a lot with placing flourishes or other decorative elements and help things feel considered and deliberate rather than random. Now that we've worked out our composition, we can begin to construct our layout. Let's begin by drawing our guidelines, the baseline, X height and cap height. I like to use a light shade of cyan and fairly thin brush for this. In Procreate, drawing a line and then holding down our pencil will make it a perfectly straight line. To ensure that our guidelines are parallel, we can duplicate the layer and move it. Uh, once I have my three guidelines for absolutely, I'm going to merge them onto a single layer, then duplicate that for chill. The guidelines we're drawing are to help our letters be consistent in size. There's not really a hard and fast rule for the ratio of the heights, so it's down to what looks right to you. A larger X height is more readable and less formal. So that's what I'm going to go with here. You can take it even further and create vertical guides as well for a very consistent angle on your italic slope. But since personally, I want this piece to feel a little bit more loose, I don't mind that there's some natural variation in the tilt of the letters. With guidelines in place, we can talk about layers. In this tutorial, I'm going to label and group the layers, which is best practice and makes things easier to follow. We're going to make a lot of layers. We've just made our guide layers. On top of this, we're going to make a group of rough scratch layers. Then we'll do a clean layer group on top. For each, we want separate layers for each word. This is so that we can reposition things easily as we go. If we do everything as a single layer, it can be a huge pain to change the space and positioning later on if we decide we need to make adjustments. I also recommend keeping the flourishes on their own layers separate from the letters so that we can avoid having to erase parts of letters when we make adjustments there. By creating a scratch layer on top of our guides before we dive fully into our letters, we can test our composition and layout and confirm that it works before committing the time and effort to the full piece. So let's do just that. Starting with a new layer for absolutely, we're going to sketch pretty loosely. I prefer to start by using a basic round brush with pressure sensitivity turned off so we don't have to worry about stroke width. We want to focus on the bare bones of the letters and how they fit together before we start worrying about decorative elements. Just be aware that when you're spacing the letters to leave a little extra room because when we add the thick lines over the top, it's going to tighten all of the letter spacing. For now, we're not going to add the crossbars to our T or do any flourishes either. For the word zero, we're taking a different approach by basing it on a display font. I've chosen a very bold, exaggerated font called Thick Thinks from Envato Elements, which is also in the description, as I'm really looking for a strong contrast with the copper plate style lettering. To add a text layer, go to the Actions toolbar. The option for Add Text is here beneath Take a Photo. We can type in our words into the default text box and we can play around with the format until we get it to the size and look that we want. If you click the text box with your Apple Pencil, you can import different fonts and adjust the tracking. Here I want the tracking to be a bit further apart so that you can see the flourishes peeking out between the letters. Once we've set our text, we're going to use the Transform tool to skew it to match the angle of our other letters. Then repeat the same procedure for Chill as we used for Absolutely. I'm also going to draw a triangular guide now to help arrange things into that shape. They don't have to fit exactly edge to edge because we're going to add flourishes, but we also want to work within that space. I'm going to try and make sure that these fit close enough while balancing the amount of overlap. I'm pretty happy with how everything is looking, so now we can reduce the opacity of the guideline and scratch layers so that we can do our clean top layers. 
For our clean layer, we can do one of two approaches. We can draw the outlines, and this is what I would recommend for beginners. It's how I started out as well. It's easier since you don't have to master the pressure control and can just sketch in the lines with lots of short strokes. A more advanced but cleaner method is using a pressure sensitive brush. The second method is what I'll focus on, but I'll give you a demo of the former for your reference as well. I'm going to start by picking a brush from the presets we downloaded earlier. In this case, I'm using the Suki hard preset. One of the advantages of the iPad over paper is the ability to zoom in so that you have a lot more control over the brush. To get the best control, zoom in until the scale is large enough so that your hand doesn't feel cramped, but not so big that you have to lift your hand up to complete a stroke. You should be able to make one smooth, continuous stroke comfortably. So pinch and zoom to the level that makes sense for you. Go back to the reference alphabet you found earlier at this stage if it helps. Pay attention to how the thickness of the line changes on the letter that you're working on. A smooth taper from thin to thick to thin again is usually what you want, which is created by gently increasing and slowly easing off the pressure as you draw, which is a lot harder than it looks at first. Uh, you can tweak the pressure response in Procreate, but it's really something you can only improve at with practice. The great thing is that with lettering, there are no rules. So you don't have to draw each letter in a single unbroken line. You can break it up into logical segments and work on it piece by piece. You will probably at some point make a mistake or two, so make friends with our handy undo tool. Sometimes it can take me a few tries to get some of the trickier letters like this S looking right. So here's where I'm going to show you the alternative process. I'll illustrate this in a different color, and I'm going to use the 6B pencil preset to sketch the outline of those thick and thin strokes. And this works perfectly well. You can then go over the outlines and fill it in afterwards. And this approach is actually how you would do something that looks like calligraphy for something like a mural, outline and fill. You don't need to master the pressure pen technique to get started with lettering, so literally the pressure's off. The downside of this method is that it does take quite a bit more time. Now, through the magic of editing, we're gonna jump forward, and as you can see, the word absolutely is now finished. On a new layer in a different color, I'm going to draw the outline of the word zero based on the type that we chose. I'm not going to trace it exactly, but I'm going to use it as a guide for the proportions. It's a bit too exaggerated for what I want, so I'm going to adjust that and also flare it out a little bit more. For this layer, we'll use the outline and fill method I just described before. I'm using the wet marker preset to do this. And with this style of lettering, the strokes are so heavy that it can be easy to lose some of the detail in the negative space. And if you do that, you can use the eraser tool to clean it up. After that, we'll approach the word chill in the same way we did for absolutely. Now we get to my favorite part, flourishes. For me, flourishing is a bit like a puzzle that you play with white space. How can I add shapes that fit organically and tie the composition together? It's a lot of trial and error, but it's also very satisfying when things come together. For this, I like to work on separate layers for each zone. You can use as many layers as you want, and I advise that you do, especially for complex flourishes, because it can become very difficult to go back and make changes once you have too many lines crisscrossing one another. I could spend a whole separate course talking about flourishing and embellishments. It's definitely an area which takes time to master. If it's something that you've never tried before, I've linked a really helpful article from Tuts Plus below. Unfortunately, there's no shortcut that will help you nail flourishes without a lot of practice, but here are some tips to keep in mind. Our layout shape will help us find where the flourishes should be added to create a pleasing and balanced layout. For our inverted pyramid shape, I want a lot of flourishes over absolutely to widen that top. And I want the flourishes underneath chilled to almost taper into a point. Uh, the easiest way to create that effect would be with a little ribbon Christmas tree shape, but I try to avoid these if possible as they can be easy to overdo with a lot of intersecting lines. Generally, flourishes are built around oval shapes and big open and small tight loops. I like to keep diagonal lines balanced so that if I have a large diagonal stroke here, I want to balance that over here. But try to avoid crossing thick strokes over one another. The overall effect that we're going for is an 
even density of line work across the letters and flourishes. So if we squint at the layout or blur it out, we shouldn't see a lot of dark and light patches, but something pretty much uniform. You want the flourishes to mimic the feel of the letters. If the letters are tightly packed, the flourishes should be too. Likewise, if they're loose and flowing. What you want to avoid is creating pseudo letters, lines and shapes that might suggest letters that aren't really there. So avoid loops that can look like lowercase e's or o's or c's depending on where they're placed. If this is new to you, here's another tip. Start with some basic flourishes that can be anchored to the exit or entry point of a letter, an ascender or descender or the crossbar of a T. Don't be afraid to start simple. The benefit of working with layers is that you can always turn off a layer and try something else on a new one. So once you've done the simple version, next try and go as big and loopy as you possibly can. You can then put the iPad down until the next day and come back with fresh eyes. Hopefully after comparing the basic and the overdone versions, you'll be able to find a decent balance the third time around. Once we're finally satisfied with our results, we can turn off our guide layers. Our final step in Procreate is to use the mask tool to intertwine the letters so that the artwork has some pleasing crisscrossing of layers. This adds some visual interest as well as adding some sense of depth to the composition. Using a layer mask, I simply mask out the part of zero where I want the flourishes and letters from other layers to overlap. What you're aiming for with this effect is to alternate between in front and behind and in front again. It's an effect that can easily be overdone. So here with the size of our letters, I'm aiming for about two overlapping spots per letter on average. And there we go. Once this effect is done, you can play with the colors and background and clean up a few stray lines and it would be more than ready to share on social media. But for an extra bit of refinement, we're going to bring this into Illustrator and vectorize it for print and merchandise purposes. But if you only wanted to share your work online, this would absolutely be a perfect stopping point. So to take our artwork from the iPad to the computer, we want to go into the gallery view and swipe left on the canvas we've been working on, then tap share. From here, we can pick a file format. I normally use PNG. If you're using a Mac, you can airdrop it to your computer. Otherwise, on a PC, you can email it to yourself as an attachment. Now, let's get things set up over on the Illustrator side. Now we'll create a new document. I'm going to set up as a four and then scale up the artwork later to poster size. I suggest if you want to follow along, you set up as a four or US letter size only so that the stroke weights that I'll share will be roughly comparable. Just remember that if you work with a bigger scale artboard, you'll need to have thicker stroke weights overall. To speed up my workflow, I use a set of plugins from Astute Graphics, namely Widscribe and Vectscribe. If you want to check them out, there will be a link in the description, but I will also show you how this process can be done without using any external plugins. Aside from installing those, there are also a few other things we want to do before we get started. Let's open up our preferences in Illustrator and go to Selection and Anchor Display and tick this option. Also open the view menu and make sure that snap to point is turned on. I also like to set up keyboard shortcuts for my most commonly used tools, which for me are some of the astute plugins, the extend path tool, smart remove brush and with selector tool. Let's drag and drop our file from Procreate onto the page and scale it to fit. For clarity, I'm going to start by using a much simpler piece to show you some of the core techniques that we'll use. We'll use the pen tool to trace the center line of the stroke making each letter, and then we'll use the variable width tool to give it shape. Now, there are some things which are much easier to do in Illustrator when we work with shapes that are straight up and down at 90 degree angles to the page, then skewed or rotated on the page. And that's because when we draw Bezier curves, they can snap to 90 or 45 degree angles, but not really anything else. So it's really hard to get consistency in our vertical angle from letter to letter if we leave our lettering italic. So for the tracing step, we'll actually use the shear tool to skew our reference artwork until we get to a straightened up result. 
Now, as you click and drag, Illustrator is going to display the number of degrees your shear angle is at. Take note of that number so that we can apply the opposite value when we undo this step later on. Okay, now using the pen tool to trace these shapes, I like to follow the clockwork method, which was developed by designer Von Glitschka, and Tuts Plus has a great course from him, which is linked below called Creating Vector Art, which goes into detail on this. But for now, I'll simply describe the core of it, which is to help us think about where the best spots to draw a point along a curve are. Now, if we think of a circle like a clock with 12, 3, 6, and 9 o'clock, we can follow that logic with our shapes. Taking the lowercase c, for example, using the same direction you would write the letter, we go from our starting point to 12 o'clock, then we find our 9 o'clock, then 6, then 3. And each time we're at one of the extremes of the curve at the horizontal or vertical tangent, like nine o'clock, for example, we want to hold down the shift key to keep our Bezier handles locked at a 90 degree angle. Pretty simple. Sometimes we might want to skip one of these points on the clock and go directly from six o'clock to 12 o'clock. But this is just a guide more than any kind of hard rule. Now we can go through our word and draw each of our anchor points. We don't need to follow the lines exactly as we'll tweak this once we have our variable stroke. But I'm going to be fairly consistent with the angles and shapes between letters. And as you can see, we have a repeated shape here between the A, G and C. So I can just copy that one form and repeat it with small adjustments. This is where the Extend Path plugin can be really helpful because I can just click and drag to keep this line going or trim it back. Of course, I can use the Selection tool to move the point and then adjust the other anchors to do the same thing. But I think it's a huge time saver when you need to do these actions hundreds of times for a project. So now we have a version of our letters, though they look a little bit stiff from being at a fixed angle. We're going to select them as well as the original reference image underneath and unshear what we did at the beginning step by putting in the number 28 degrees. And now that everything has been reset and we have our letters at the correct angle, we can go in and tweak that by I, since what we did before was just kind of a starting point to make sure we had some consistency. Now we can make sure that it looks right compared back to our reference. Now for this step, I'm going to use a similar method, but for the flourishes, I definitely try to use as few points as possible. And I prefer to use the top and bottom Beziers to bring a shape together. When I try to get a nice round bowl like this, I try to set the Bezier handles to line up vertically whenever I can. I find that this gives a really pleasing, smooth effect. Also at the start and end points of flourishes, I'll often overshoot and use that extend path tool to trim back to give it a natural angle. But if you don't have that plugin, there's no problem just drawing these points by eye. So hopefully that gives you some insight into the overall approach to creating the vector outlines for this style of copper plate lettering and flourishing. When adding variable width for our letters, we want to put the emphasis on our verticals, making thicker lines on verticals and thinner lines on horizontals. To use Illustrator's built-in tool, hold Shift and W to pick the width tool. Double click to place a new width marker along the line. You can always refer back to your reference alphabet if you're not sure where the thickest part of the line should be. We want to place one marker where the line gets thickest and one where the line tapers to its thinnest. If we do just that, you might see a problem. It's something that's been a problem in Illustrator for years. It's just part of how this feature is built, I'm guessing. But despite setting the specific values of one point for our thinnest and six points for our thickest part of the line, there are points along this curve which are thicker and thinner than those values. Now, this is an issue if you're printing smaller, like on a sticker or business card, when the lines can be too fine for something to print correctly, or at very large sizes where you'll visually be able to see this unwanted variation. In any case, let's fix it. And the way to do that is to add additional points in between fairly close to our original ones. Now, we need to smooth any remaining awkward spots. 
I find the sharp angles especially tend to be a bit of a problem. So sometimes I'll use a non-symmetrical tweak around these by holding the Option key while dragging, which will allow me to adjust only the inside or the outside edge. If we look at flourishes, I want the thickest part of the stroke to be on the diagonals rather than on the verticals. But apart from that, it's a fairly similar process to the letters, although I will go a little bit lighter than six point for some of the shorter line work. Finally, I'll also go through and make sure that my end caps have been rounded. So where does the plugin come in? Well, let's switch from this demonstration phrase magic back to our original absolutely zero chill first. While there's nothing wrong about the built-in width tool, it does take a double click and then a confirmation click on OK for each and every point that you add. Now, this quickly accumulates to a lot of clicking, especially the more flourishes you add to a composition. The nice thing about the Width Selector tool from Astute Graphics is that I can just hold down Option and click to add any points that I need. And then I can select groups of points which I want to alter and change them in one go. For a composition like this, it's a huge time saver. With all our layers complete, we can now do the interweaving. Until this stage, we've been mostly working with strokes, but for this step, we want to expand those shapes into filled objects. I like to make a duplicate of my original layers before taking this step, as if I want to do something like change the scale or the line thickness, I can always go back to that original layer. Once we have a copy of those layers, we can go to Object, Expand Appearance, and then repeat also expand if there are any lines that haven't had the width tool applied. Then all our strokes will now be solid objects. And now's the time I like to clean up any glitches or uneven areas. This often happens where there is a fairly sharp angle change. And I find if I have a fairly long flourish, it will sometimes give odd results too. You can clean these up manually by removing the extraneous points and adjusting the anchor points. You can switch your layer visibility to outline mode and then turn back on your cloned layer as a reference to help you do this. Alternatively, the Astute plugin Smart Remove Brush makes this much easier. Now, this has a setting to adjust how aggressively it will simplify your outlines by removing points. I usually leave the settings at the default value as if there's a point that I want to take out that is under that threshold, I can force it to be removed by holding the Option key as I brush. As Illustrator does this somewhat asymmetrically, I find it's sometimes helpful to add an extra point during this process. You can also replace the end caps on your thicker lines, which I like to do to give it a little extra flair rather than just a flat line. No tricks here, just takes a lot of copy and pasting, but I think it's worth the extra effort. And I like a slightly waved concave style, but you can make it convex or simply angle different. It's totally up to your personal taste. The easiest way to do interweaving of our layers here is similar to what we did originally with the layer mask, except in Illustrator, that mask is made with a compound shape. So on a new layer with a transparent fill and simple outline, we'll first enclose the whole area with a large rectangle. Then I'll use the ellipse tool to draw a circle around each spot where we want zero to be behind with the other letters over the top. Now we select all on this layer, which should pick all our circles and rectangle. Hit Command and 8 to create a compound path. Let's go back to our layer with 0 and move it to the bottom of the layer order. This will mean all of the other words are on top of it. Now let's copy the contents from there. We want to select our mask, then swap the outline with Fill. Then use Command B to paste the letters from 0 behind that mask. We want to use the Command 7 shortcut to make a clipping mask. We should now have the weaving effect just as we had sketched earlier. As far as the process is concerned, we are finished. But something we haven't really looked at is color and special effects. And here it really depends on what effect and mood that you're after. Take a look on social media under the lettering hashtag to look for some inspiration. And then you can always set your colors as CMYK or like I'm doing here as spot color. I'm setting this up to print on Risograph, which has its own set of inks. And I enjoy working with creative restraints. I've used this freeform gradient tool in black and white to create an opacity mask 
for my spot colors to make an organic gradient background. I've also added an inline stroke with a textured brush to really emphasize that word zero and make it pop. And like that, we are finally ready to print and share online. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like or subscribe to the channel for more tutorials. We took a deep dive into lettering today from sketching to Procreate to Illustrator. I hope that you picked up a few tips and ideas along the way to incorporate into your own lettering workflow. My name is Linus for Envato Tuts Plus. Feel free to check out my channel, Linus Bowman, if you're interested in design history or analysis, especially fonts. Thank you for joining me today and I hope that you have a good one.